United v Young Boys game that happened the other day. Again, I don't want to go over it too much because it's a it's a broken record at this point. I spent many many hours over the last couple of days, or the over yesterday and the subsequent day, um, on Twitter Spaces arguing with other fellow United fans and just trying to ration, just trying to understand why exactly we're in this position we're at the moment. But taking into consideration the game itself specifically, I thought it was a fairly mediocre game of football. I thought, if anything, Young Boys probably played a better football. They obviously had the more chances. I think looking at the stats, if I'm not mistaken here, we had a very measly two shots on target the entire game. Even though one of our players only got sent off on the 30th, 35th minute, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely shocking. Um, so obviously, you know, Young Boys definitely came out to spoil our party, especially with Cristiano's return. First game in the, in the Champions League away from home. Big deal, blah, blah, blah. They didn't give a crap. And it's more embarrassing because allegedly they started off their domestic season pretty poorly. I think they're sitting in fourth place or something right so which is obviously not a good place for them to be considering that they are former champions so the game itself again fairly mediocre game i wasn't that um annoyed with the starting lineup i thought the starting lineup was fairly solid and get up here up in the screen i didn't have any complaints about it a apart from the double pivot that Oli or soul shark seems to pref seems to prefer which i'm not really a big fan of but in general this is what he seems to like how to have to play i thought in preseason we saw van der beek and matic playing at double pivot and they played really well um i thought it would have made more sense to play matic there of course he's getting a bit a bit long in the tooth and maybe Oli wanted to give him a rest but I think in a Champions League game away from home you could have easily started with Matic and Van der Beek because they're familiar with playing with each other and maybe their playing styles match a little bit more and then if one or either got tired you could easily bring on Fred for the extra legs and a bit of energy in midfield easy right again hindsight is 2020 but i thought that would have been a good decision the rest of the lineup i would never have a problem with Bruno fernandez playing as a 10 probably playing in that kind of floating eight position here on the left um and then of course sancho on the right as a bit of an outlet maybe connecting a little bit with ronaldo up top as the game transpired though there wasn't much connection between the front three it felt like and ronaldo um it felt like a little bit disjointed obviously the ball that Bruno fernandez played to ronaldo was sublime and obviously one of the better bits of attacking play that we had but we didn't see enough of it I did make a comment earlier on in the game that I did think there was maybe up until the 35th minute, it felt like it was Bruno Fernandes' most disciplined performance I've ever seen him play in a Man United shirt, especially in number 10. He didn't go wandering up front. He basically occupied that space in the middle and was on the ball or fairly active in that number 10 position a lot more than he was prior. I thought Fred played pretty decently. I thought Van der Beek was pretty tidy, if not, you know, just not super impressive, but he was tidy when he was on the ball. He didn't lose possession. I think his stats were like 92% uh, past completion so he was obviously fairly good in that position where you can lose the ball um, pretty easily especially with the attackers coming to press you in order to kind of break through into the defence I thought Sancho of course side a bit shaky but still I thought he was maybe coming into a bit of his own I think the right hand side connection between him and wan is obviously not the greatest partnership because wan isn't the best going forward and he's passing short passing is not where it needs to be to make that into to make that basically triangle work it's not going to work that way with wan well, obviously as it transpired it didn't and then Luke Shaw on this side and Pogba I thought were a little bit disjointed too um, I thought Pogba started off the game pretty poorly he played pretty poorly the entire game really um, it seemed like he was getting a hush, rushed and, and harried off the ball a lot easier than he has done in past and just seemed to be kind of off his game and of course as soon as we got the goal I felt like maybe we could settle our nerves and get back into the game but if anything we kind of gave the onus back to young boys again and then their constant pressure and buzzing around and pressing us on the ball eventually led to wan miscontrolling a pretty easy bit of a pretty easy pass um and then as he's going to go try to get recover his second touch he lunges in catches the guy on the ankle and gets sent off easy red card no arguments there in my opinion but i still think between the hours the minutes of 35 to 45 where we weathered the storm and we went into the half time still one it up i still think we had enough in the locker between that time all until the end of the game to at worst get a draw because of course you're playing in the champions league it's not gonna be any gimme gimme matches even if you're playing against a swiss team or austrian team it doesn't matter they're all going to be fairly decent they're going to give you problems especially if they're playing in front of their home crowd after the pandemic and stuff everyone's going to be up especially if you're playing a big team you're going to want to impress so it's not like I expect us to win against young boys, but I did expect at the very least maybe to have to concede a last minute equaliser, right? Which would have been a gut blow, but all things considered, we could have dust ourselves off and continue for the next one. But I didn't expect as soon as we came up for the second half for Oli to make 
an immediate substitution, which I didn't think was necessary, bringing on Varane and taking on Van der Beek. Um, I just didn't think it made much sense because immediately it kind of allowed us to kind of sit back five yards into our own box, which then invited more pressure from young boys. And then we didn't have an out ball in terms of trying to get further up the pitch. So essentially we decided to give up on the game and hope that we could hold on until the end for a draw, or for a win or for a draw. And in the end, again, in the Champions League at this level, you don't really win games. You can't, you can't kind of, um, you can't manage games like that. You have to be a bit more purposeful, a bit more intentional about what you're trying to do. Whether it's trying to maybe rejig how the midfield is, so you can have better screen in front of the defenders. Whether it's uh, rejigging who's playing, because uh, again, I would have said maybe not taking off. Because again, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem with maybe taking off a Sancho and bringing on a Dallo. But there may be of an argument to taking off a Bruno Fernandez and keeping a Sancho on for an outlet because Bruno, Pogba, Fred, they don't really have the legs to kind of transition or keep the ball further up the pitch or maybe Pogba maybe does but in terms of just pace they don't really have much of it especially with Ronaldo up front it would have made more sense to keep a Sancho on maybe taking off a Bruno Fernandes who again number 10 a bit more of a luxury brought on a Dallo see how that formation or see how we would have been with that with maybe Sancho playing just behind Ronaldo to kind of again uh, maybe compact the midfield a little bit maybe make them a flat four a, fl a flat four or five in front of the defence in terms of Pogba Fred um, Sancho and Van der Beek, All right? And then maybe just have Ronaldo up front on his own. That possibly could have worked in that regard. But I think immediately going for that substitution with Varane, um, it just it just spelled disaster, and we just couldn't handle it again. We don't have we're not defensively um, drilled enough, or no, we're not we're not defensively. Um, astute enough to kind of hold on to those kind of issues because it can be done you have to be cute you have to be a little bit clever you have to maybe you know employ some of the dark arts to kind of get out of that situation but it's not something that we can currently do at this current level that we're currently playing at. it's just not going to happen um so i wasn't really a fan of that substitution that really made no sense to me we continue and of course we can see the equalizer pretty soon no not i think in the 70th minute i think if i'm not mistaken we can see that yeah about the 60th minute um the equalizer was pretty terrible again considering we had three international center backs on the pitch plus our four backs in Dallow and Luke Shaw when the ball goes off out to the wing and before it gets crossed into the box where we concede Luke Shaw is nowhere near whoever's on the wing he's tucked in inside he doesn't see his man out there he hasn't to sprint out to try and block the cross block the cross he doesn't the cross comes in and then bang we're already 1-1 one, one down right oh sorry it's it, it's um it's 1-1 one, one now and quite likely it's going to look like they're going to try and win the game and eventually they did end up winning the game and um to kind of compound things and make it even weirder the substitutions after that were didn't make much sense after do you know what I mean it didn't really make much sense um from the Nemanja matches signed the matches matches um, substitution that probably should have come before um which probably should have come way before it did maybe it could have come at the same time that that the Dello came on who knows the Varane substitution like I said didn't make much sense Varane maybe should have played especially because for continuity for continued con continuity whatever it's called right you maybe you could have kept Varane on and maybe he's changed one of the people at the back line maybe it's a Dello for Juan Biseca, or maybe it's somebody else for left back I don't really know but that could have been a far better way to go around things maybe Greenwood would, could have come on as again a striker to put up front who can maybe have pace on the break to worry the um, young boys defenders because as good as Ronaldo is on the ball he's not going to outrun anybody anytime soon and just in general the in-game management was pretty terrible tactics wise and it raised a lot of interesting questions about United in terms of where we go from here because it's quite clear we have improved every aspect of our club allegedly right if you believe what you believe what you read on online in terms of our recruitment policy we've got a director of football in place which we never had before something United fans have been crying out for myself included um, it seems like we're doing transfers a lot more more efficiently now things don't take ages to get concluded as they did prior we've got far better players um allegedly the coaching staff is kind of improved with the addition of that guy from Chelsea but so far the manager hasn't changed and the same mistakes keep happening the same little errors the same little things that you would expect somebody who's been in management that's Oli has been for 10 plus years shouldn't be keep doing at this point so I wonder what when 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 does the time come where United fans say to themselves when will we decide that maybe it's not just the players for all the time, which it obviously is in this case. You know, Aaron Wan-Bissaka getting sent off and Lingard giving away the ball for the second goal, which ultimately was the winner. Those are huge mistakes that are definitely going to hurt you, hurt your ability to try and win a game. But I think considering the red card came at the 35th minute and went into half-time 1-0 up, 15 minutes plus or plus stoppage time, we still were able to weather the storm. And the fact that we only conceded those two goals in the second half when we should have been a lot more 
defensively resolute and kind of um dr- kind of, yeah resolute in terms of what we were trying to do second half that is pretty embarrassing especially when you consider the substitutions that are being made so for me i don't want to be in a position where we have to be in six or in like a arsenal position out of the europe and everything for us to change manager i don't think that's necessary i don't think you always need to be down in the dumps for you to finally realize you know what maybe this guy isn't the guy to take us to the next level which, which is evidently true social's done a great job to get us where we are now but in terms of where we want to go he's just not going to be the guy he doesn't have a the quality or the ability to get that done and that's okay but of course the players have to take a huge amount of accountability I think I saw a lot of nervous players out there on the pitch I saw a lot of players who were very aware that we were playing a Champions League game first in the season with Ronaldo in our lineup there was a lot riding on this game they wanted to obviously show out and make a good impression especially considering how um, good the feeling was around the Newcastle game the other week so for sure I saw a lot of nerves and that's why I maintained from the beginning that it was more important for Oli to have won a trophy last season than a club. I don't care if it was a Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, it would have been more important for him to have won a trophy, maybe even more important than finishing top four. Maybe the club wouldn't agree for Oli than it would have been for the club because Oli needs to know that he has the minerals or he has the ability to win a trophy with this team or to win a trophy with a club of this stature. And at the moment, I feel like that lack of belief is kind of emanating and seeping through into the players where they're not quite believing that they can get it done despite the quality of players that we've improved on because you know there's no denying that Oli's been backed in every meaningful way maybe with the exception of maybe a DM which he doesn't necessarily look like he's that worried about or prioritising because you know in the three seasons he's been here so far we've not really made a big move for anybody in that position so it definitely feels like that's not really a priority position for him but regardless everything else has been given in terms of the players that he's won is so far maybe the exception of maybe a realish I don't know but so far we've got everyone we've kind of wanted is maybe a exception of maybe Haaland as well but we've got Ronaldo who's a pretty decent substitute right so if that's the case there has to come a point where maybe the manager's the issue and I think for all the other fans especially when I watch stuff like Shefford Paddock and whatnot a lot of these guys are delusional um, I understand it because again Oli is a legend and if you you know if you're if we're all the similar ages and we saw United win you know that Champions League in 99 and you saw Oli obviously score that last minute equaliser and you see the amazing so the, the, the last minute winner and obviously you see how amazing he was coming off on the bench and just an excellent service servant all around for United it's no it's no surprise that you'd want him to do well at the club, right? I understand it, but we have to be objective and we have to kind of look at stuff honestly and just say he is not as good as a manager or as a coach or as the coaches in the league. That's definitely true. If you have to rank them in terms of tables, he definitely doesn't come anywhere past the Klops, the two shoes and the Peps. It just is what it is. So if that's the case, we're asking a lot from some guy that we all think is pretty average to win a league title and maybe some trophies. We've obviously seen it happen with Di Matteo at Chelsea. He was able to win the Champions League, but it's very difficult to challenge for the league and to maybe try and attempt to win multiple trophies with an average manager but great players. It just doesn't happen. You need that X factor. You need that little bit extra. If Wherever you believe if managers are not that important still they contribute something and unfortunately there's something that Oli contributes isn't what's necessary at this top level and we're kind of paying the price at the moment so you know Young Boys 2 United 1 um, first game of course of the group we've obviously got some stronger tests well we've got some it now puts unnecessary pressure on the next games going forward like the Atalanta and Villarreal games is unnecessary pressure luckily we I think both games are going to be at home so that should kind of help us in terms of easing our nerves and probably getting us in the right state of mind to try and put our best, best foot forward Forward, but we really didn't need to win that game but hey we lost 2-1 it's the first game of the season or first game of the group stages shouldn't be that much of an issue we should be able to dust ourselves up and try again um, and I'm hoping for better results in the next one